put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. And in black 3, in 3D, movie view. When a... an alien invasion threatens Earth, Jay finds that K is suddenly missing and no one else seems to know that he hasn't been dead for 40 years. That's what everybody else seems to think. And so he... he finds that he must go back in time in order to save him from... someone else who went back in time to kill him. So, obviously, Jay, you know, hooks back up with Kay, and he's all like, come with me if you want to live, and Kay is all like, okay, but on the one condition that you don't wear a hoodie because you might get shot by someone claiming self-defense even though he chased you down to shoot you anyway. That is basically, you know, the, the overall plot. But yeah, once he gets back in time, which is where the movie really begins to take off, it's pretty boring in the early present day scenes and savagely unfunny also which again also picks up once they go back in time yeah it it really starts the plot going and you know just because he is back in time he still needs to figure out exactly what happened and yeah so they go on a nice little investigation, and there's a mystery, and, excuse me, it, yeah, it, it feels somewhat like, excuse me, a proper Men in Black story, like a, you know, a proper sequel to, you know, the first one, and I'm, I'm glad they made one. I, I heard they were going to make a second film, but, yeah, I, I don't think that ever really materialized, I, or... I don't know, maybe I, maybe I neuralized myself. Anyway, yeah, this is not as good as the first one, but it is a pretty good movie. I, I'd say whether, whether or not you're going to like this movie depends a lot on if you like action movies made today, because this is very much an action movie made today. It really looks like and feels like, you know, stuff like... Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, the A-Team, you know, it's it's big action. Um, they're not quite as big as you know, those two movies, but yeah. It's a lot bigger action than the first movies, and yeah, there are kind of... Basically, the first two action scenes did not need to be in this movie. You know, in fact, the yeah, I, I think they, they kind of try to outdo each other in just how unnecessary and just, you know, sh sh shoehorned in they are. Because, you know, today in action movies, Hollywood really thinks that you just cannot pay attention if there isn't constantly something, you know, big happening. So, yeah. The... I should maybe talk just a little bit about the villain. I won't give too many details away, because it seems like... I don't think I've seen him very much in the trailer. I mean, yeah, I, I can give as much away as that guy, you know, in the trailer where they, you know, Jay's like, there's some secrets the universe doesn't know about, and then you see a guy, like, in a cell, and he's got, like, a metal thing on his arm. That is the bad guy. Boris. And, yeah. What I will say is... His appearance... A little bland, 
and he has kind of this deep voice because you know bad guys speak in deep in a deep voice and he doesn't have very much personality in fact i i'm not sure i could completely with certainty tell you any personality traits he, it seems like in one scene he has one personality trait and then in another scene he has a completely different personality or at least yeah, not not the same personality trait, and it's just, yeah, I, I couldn't quite, it didn't seem to form a cohesive whole, is what I'm saying. He was a very dull bad guy, but yeah, that's basically it for that, you know, don't get me wrong, he's a threatening bad guy, you know, forget Serlina, this is, you know, we, we have a pretty threatening bad guy, nowhere near as interesting as Edgar the... <sighs> man skin wearing giant cockroach and nowhere near as unique yeah, yeah overall the, the entire movie is very much not as unique in fact i think it in case i haven't made it clear this is very much hollywood Th this film the first one i say is uh, yeah i i wouldn't classify it as particularly hollywood it doesn't feel like it was really trying to be really popular and this one really does just try to follow what is popular you know but yeah the the humor mostly works again early on there are some really bad jokes but after a little while it it really picks up and almost all of them you know end up working something that definitely needs mentioning is the you know, the the entire trilogy kind of tries to, or, yeah, kind of centers around the relationship between K and J. It was something that a lot of people fell in love with, understandably so, in the first movie. So they made a sequel where they tried to sort of recreate that really awkwardly. This one, they, again, try to play around with it, you know, this time with time travel, because, yeah, they had to do something. And it works out pretty well. Josh Brolin is obviously perfectly cast, you know, he just has the exact, he is like a, you know, couple of decades younger Tommy Lee Jones, you know, and Tommy Lee Jones is somewhat spared in this movie. I mean, he just can't quite pull that stuff off anymore. It's it's understandable at his age, and I would dare I would never dare say that to his face. But yeah, so Brolin plays the younger version, and I'd say that they did a good job of writing the young character of Kay. You know, you can tell that he he will grow up to be the Kay we know and love, but he isn't quite that guy yet. So there are, there are these little, you know, hints of it, and, you know, he has some of the same stuff, mannerisms and such, but it kind of, it's always dangerous when they try to do this and say, you know, oh, here we have the younger version of, you know, this character we already know, and you know, stuff like that, and then you just have, yeah, you know, it, it can be really dumb and really, yeah, lame, you know. With this, I think they do it right. I, I, I'd I, actually say you can go into this movie. I mean, you see, do you do see old K some before they jump back in time, but even if you don't really know old K before seeing young K in this movie, you can still kind of get into his character. You know, you maybe won't appreciate that, oh, yeah, this is that's like what older K does, but you can still get into his character. He's not written as just... A ton of references to what we know he'll later do, you know. He has some of the same personality, but again, some of it isn't. And, yeah, you know, they have a new dynamic, because young K doesn't know, should he completely trust J, and, you know, stuff is done differently back then, you know, this is like five years after the MIB were founded, you know, they talk about that in the first movie, you know, that was like 1964, and then this is, takes place in 1969, and that, of course, also brings, it, it was kind of obvious to do this, you know, I mean, 
adding time travel. It's, it's just one of those things that, like, okay, we're out of ideas, we need a sequel, time travel, we haven't done that yet, you know, and the decade that they choose is, of course, you know, not, not some random, or not, not some that isn't funny, you know, people never seem to time travel back, at least in comedies, to, you know, decades like, I don't know, the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, I guess they, they just weren't quite as colorful and fun. So yeah, it's always like the 60s and the 70s. So with that said, again, to summarize, time travel, which can be, you know, kind of a cop-out, and the 60s, which is, you know, a really obvious place to go for, you know, jokes about a different decade and of the sort of like, you know, ooh, look at this other decade, isn't it weird because we're not in it and we didn't really experience it so we can poke fun at it without actually, you know, having to reflect at all. Those two things are not really that true in this case. You know, it, you can argue that it's maybe a cop-out to have them you know, do the time travel thing, but they actually do something with it. You know, they have young K, and they actually go exploring. You know, the, early on it's set up with old K that, you know, I mean, we already know what he's like, but Jay sort of, you know, spells out, you know, you're this old grumpy guy, and you never talk to me, and, you know, how did, how did this happen to you? And, yeah, you know, so he goes back, meets young K, and it's like, you know, yeah, so what happened, you know, what what made K the way he is, sort of, you know. And the decade, not that, you know, it doesn't really influence the, that, that much as far as, you know, jokes and such. It, I'd say it's, it's somewhat like with Dark Shadows, well, less so than Dark Shadows, actually. It's sort of just the backdrop for this, you know, adventure. There are some jokes, and, you know, it's pretty obvious stuff. You know, you, you see some of the trailers, you got, you know, Andy Warhol in there, and yes, of course, they're going to go with, you know, the people around Andy Warhol, and, you know, that whole, you know, artistic thing that they were doing. Those were aliens, you know, it's, it's really obvious. And again, just nowhere near as interesting as, you know, the, the running gag of the first movie with, you know, cab drivers, in, especially in New York, those are aliens, right? You know, it's just, yeah. But it's not that, that commonly used of a joke. You know, they, they spend a few minutes on it, and that's kind of it. Also, this movie has a really fun character. I'm not going to give too much away, it's just basically, his name is Griff, and he has this ability where he can see, yeah, I, it's, it's not really a spoiler, he can basically see stuff, you know, outside of time, sort of, and, you know, it's not completely original to have a character like this, but... He's a good character, you know, you you like him. And, you know, th this movie does some stuff that the second one should have done. It introduces new, you know, stuff. And also, very creative alien designs, by the way. And it makes the MIB cool again, although there are still some of the retards still working there from the second one. But, it's also a proper, you know, threat excuse me, thrilling action film. Again, you know, closer to what the first was. You know, you actually get a sense of danger for the agents, you know. And, yeah, they, they actually do that quite well. It's, it's a very exciting film. The 3D is quite well done. They do not really, like, hammer it home. They kind of just use it as, you know, you, you get a sense of, like, it... it it helps with the immersion. And then there are a couple of times where, like, stuff is thrown at you. You see in the trailer how Jay has to, you know, jump off the Empire State Building to travel through time. Yeah, obviously that they're gonna 
do some 3D, it looks great. You know, and actually the, the con conceptualization and ex execution of the time travel is a really cool idea. I, I, I really shouldn't give anything away about that. It's just, it's quite nicely done. The dialogue is quite good. I did think that there were a couple of characters. The, the Andy, Andy Warhol thing, it, it, did, it, it did nothing for me, honestly. I, yeah, I don't know if it's like a really American thing where, yeah, I don't know. Just didn't do anything for me. But again, it's, it's a short part of the film. It's not something that really, you know, gets to you. Now, it's it's a quite well-paced film. It's it's a film where you really get into the story, and the story moves nicely along throughout it. There are some really good character moments. The relationship between K and J, both versions of K, is very enjoyable. And, yeah, like with the first one, it it helps keep the film going. You know, it, it helps keep you interested. There are, of course, a few things. I mean, you, you see those, what are they called, Mon monocycles or whatever in the, you know, in the trailer. You know, some of this stuff of, you know, the, the prequel problem, you know, the George Lucas thing with, you know, it's the past, but yet we have more advanced technology than in the future because we made the movie in the future... The, the future movie we made first, and then we made a movie set in the past, and now we have better technology and we want to show it off. The effects are great, by the way. It's a film that definitely does warrant a theater-going experience. If you're going to watch this movie, you should watch it in the theater, and you should watch it in 3D. It tries to sort of add some to the sort of overall, overarching MIB, I don't know, I'm not sure you could quite call it mythology, but you know, I personally don't think that was a good idea, but I know that it's like, you know, Hollywood loves to do it, maybe especially today, I feel like I've seen it in several, several recent movies, and if, hey, that's just my opinion, you might love it, you know. If, if you want to see that, then this movie does it, and I'm not saying it does a bad job of it. Actually, it does a good job of it. I just wish they didn't do it. I suppose that is pretty much it. Yeah, you know, pretty good film. Definitely, it, it works more often than it doesn't, and it has some good elements to it. Yeah. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.